All right, so today uh, we're doing the New York State Snow Survey Lab. The New York State Snow Survey Lab. All right. All right, so this is from a uh, newspaper article, and it was about the snowiest places in the world. Um, so they had the snowiest colleges, and then here was the snowiest cities in the world. And some of these cities on this uh, should sound very familiar. Uh, number nine, snowiest city in the world, Buffalo, New York, 95 inches on average. Number eight, snowiest city in the world, uh, Rochester, New York, 99 inches of snow. Uh, number five snowiest city in the world, Syracuse, New York, an average of 124 inches of snow. Um, <clears throat> so it's not just random that uh, all these places, uh, you know, Rochester, uh, Syracuse, and Buffalo, all central to western New York, are uh, so snowy. All right. Um, now these are the snowiest, it says cities, these are bigger cities, places with like 100,000 people or more. There are some small cities um, that, that get more snow than this. But this, these are you know bigger size cities. Um, but anyways, uh, all these places on the list here, it, there's a bunch of places in Japan and a few places in Canada, like Quebec City and uh, Newfoundland. Um, these places are all getting a lot of snow for the same reason. And the reason why they get so much snow is basically because of lake effect. All right, so to get lake effect snow, uh, what you have to have is some really cold air, and the cold air has to blow across an uh, open body of water that's relatively warm. And typically it's better if there's like a landmass over here, so it's, it's air that's coming off a of landmass, then going over water, um, picking up moisture, it's evaporating, so now this air is very moist. Then when it hits land, if there's high elevation over here, like a mountain range or a plateau, um, what's gonna happen is as that air goes up the plateau or up the mountain range, whenever air rises, um, and the air cools down and eventually you'll reach the dew point temperature, which will cause condensation, you'll get clouds and you'll get snow. Um, so whenever air goes up one side of the mountain, you're, that's gonna be a that side of the mountain is going to get a lot of precipitation. So places located over here um, are going to get a lot of snow. And that's um, all those places in New York um, are either just the side of either Lake Ontario or Lake Erie. The places in Japan that get a lot of snow, there's mostly the result of the, the wind moving over the Sea of Japan. And then uh, there's a couple places in Canada that's basically the same thing going on. All right. So let's look at the map of New York. All right, well, here's a map of New York. I put Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo. Mid Lakes is right there. So Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo. I drew in where Lake Ontario is and where Lake Erie is. All right. So Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse all get tremendous amounts of snow. All right. Uh, Toronto, Canada, which is a very big city, uh, is right on Lake Ontario, um, just like Buffalo is right on Lake Erie and Rochester is right on Lake Ontario. Um, but Toronto doesn't get nearly as much lake effect snow as Rochester does, or Syracuse or Buffalo. And the reason for that has to do with the prevailing winds. Uh, the winds at our latitude typically blow this way. So like the winds are blowing across Lake Erie, picking up a bunch of moisture, then dumping it in the Buffalo area as lake effect snow. For Syracuse and Rochester, 
the winds blow across Lake Ontario, picking up a bunch of moisture, and then it comes out as snow over here. Toronto, even though it's right on the lake, the winds typically blow this way, so the moisture from Lake Ontario is actually getting blown away from Toronto. Now, that doesn't mean Toronto doesn't get any snow. Um, once in a while, the wind might go this way. Or Toronto actually does get lake effect snow, not on this map here, but there's Lake Huron is up here. Toronto can get some of the lake effect snow coming off Lake Huron up here. But Toronto doesn't get that much lake effect coming off Lake Ontario because the winds typically blow this way. All right. Um, all right, now Syracuse is not right on the lake. Syracuse is about 15, 20 miles away from Lake Ontario. Rochester's right on the lake. Um, Syracuse gets more snow than Rochester um, because around Rochester, the land is fairly flat. And to make lake effect snow, uh, to make more lake effect snow, you really need that moist air to be rising. And over here around Syracuse area, um, the air, even though it's away from the lake a ways, when the air is going like this, this area over here is higher in elevation. So it kind of has to go up. And that rising air right there is why, which dumps a lot more snow on Syracuse and Rochester. Now over here in New York State, uh, this is the Adirondack Mountains over here. And then right here you have the Tug Hill Plateau. So these areas over here get tremendous amounts of snow. These areas here actually get more snow than Syracuse does. But again, that list I showed you was a list of big cities, and there's no big cities over here. But this area here in the Tug Hill Plateau gets, gets a lot more snow than even Syracuse does. All right. Now, um, these areas on this map, this is a map from the lab, um, these areas are what are called drainage basins. So like area A right there, what that corresponds to is... Area A is in the Allegheny River drainage basin. So what that means is all the streams in area A end up flowing into the Allegheny River. Any of the rainfall that falls into area A ends up going into the Allegheny River. Or like area F, it says it's the Black River drainage basin. So what that means is on that map, On that map in area F, all the rivers and streams and stuff like that end up flowing into the Black River. All right. So that's what these areas are. These areas are very strange basins. Now in this lab, I have some data right here. And what this data is, um, it says six consecutive years worth of weather data and it's the snow, average snow depth in inches on March 15th. So March 15th, you're, you're at the very end of the winter time. And what you can, in, uh, so here's the drainage basins and here's how many inches on average are in there. Uh, so first off, if you look at it, what you should notice is that there's some areas in New York consistently have more snow than other areas in March, all right? Now I look on here, I can see that uh, A, B, and C I don't really see that much snow consistently. Um, e and F have a lot more snow, and then you have some areas here that don't typically have as much snow on the ground. Now there's one year that's an anomaly here, and that's 2017. If I look at 2017 data, uh, what I'll notice is that every place has lots of snow. And the reason why there's so much snow in 2017 is actually a couple days before March 15th of 2017, uh, there was this huge snowstorm, this big nor'easter, uh, this like big blizzard that hit the whole hit the whole northeast. So this wasn't lake effect snow here. This was caused by a massive snowstorm um, that covered the entire region. Uh, most of the snow over here, these other years, that's mostly lake effect snow. But anyway, so that's kind of an anomaly. So skipping that one year there. Um, I see again the A, B, and C don't have very much snow, but like E and F and so forth, they have a lot more snow. Well, let's look back where those areas are. All 
All right, A, B, and C, um, they're over here by Buffalo. They don't have very much snow on the ground in March, where E and F over here have, do have lots of snow on the ground. And you're like, huh? Um, you know, this area is getting lots of lake effect snow. I thought Buffalo was one of the snowiest cities in the world. So how come these areas here aren't getting very much lake effect or don't have very much snow on the ground in March? And the reason being for that has to do with the characteristics of Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. Um, Lake Ontario, they're both roughly about the same size. However, Lake Ontario is a much deeper lake than Lake Erie is. And as a result, um, Lake Erie, Buffalo gets most of their lake effect snow in the first half of the winter. Um, but because Erie is shallow, usually by about midway through the winter point, winter time, Lake Erie's frozen over. So once Lake Erie freezes over and it's all ice, Buffalo doesn't get much, very much lake effect snow anymore. Lake Ontario, on the other hand, is a very deep lake, which rarely freezes over. So all winter long, this is open water that lets water, that lets moisture evaporate off of it. So because this is open water all year round, these areas here are gonna get hammered with lake effect all winter long. Whereas if these places just to the east of Buffalo, uh, Lake Erie usually freezes over by the end of winter. So that's why um, this data at the end of March has so little snow here, so much snow there. If I had how much snow was on the ground, like in the beginning of January, then you'd probably find a lot more snow here and it'd probably be roughly about the same. All right. All right, so um, what you have to do for this lab is first off with my snow data right here what you're going to have to do is calculate the average snow depth for each area so to find the average depth for each area what you're going to have to do is add the numbers across, and then I have six years worth of data, so you have to add the numbers across and divide by six. So 0 0.7 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 4.8 plus 22.3, hit equals on your calculator, and then divide by six to get the average of those. Um, so you're doing it for all these. You add them, add them all the way across, hit equals, and divide by six, that gives you the average. Now, because I'm a swell guy, I'm going to tell you what the first one is. So for A, when I average up those numbers, that works out to be 4.6 uh, inches. Right? Um, so for these here, uh, you should round it to the nearest tenth. Right? Now, once I've done that for all these numbers right here, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to my map. So that 4.6 uh, was for area A. So let me make this a little smaller. All right, so that 4.6 was for area A. So I'm gonna write 4.6 down there. Uh, next, I'm gonna need uh, some colored pencils. And I'm gonna need these here. So there's actually nothing that's 25 and up, so don't worry about that one. But I need five colored pencils. And so let's say I pick the color blue for area zero to five, all right? So 4.6 falls between the zero to five range. So what I would then do is color this whole area here very nice and neatly, much neater than what I'm actually doing right here. So I color that whole area like that to show that that's the average, that's what the average depth is for that drainage basin right there. So you're gonna do that for all of them. Calculate the averages for all these drainage basins. Plot the value, the number of what the 
average for the spot was in that area, and then color it in according to this key right there. All right. Uh, and then once you have your map all colored in based on your uh, snow depth key, uh, then you answer the questions based on um, what your map here and just some other questions based on lake effect snow. All right, that's it.